Hello, this is Tristan from CardioCritic.com and this is my video review of the new Garmin Vivo Active 3. This attractive round model replaces the previously square Vivo Active and Vivo Active HR. So this is the third in the range of Vivo Active watches. As you can see, it's a stylish, slim, round design with a touchscreen colour display and a slider on the side that can be used to control up and down and a single button on the right hand side. The purpose of my videos is to show you the features and functions of the watches as if you were to own one yourself. So it's a product walkthrough giving you a good idea of what the watch does and doesn't do and hopefully working out if it's suited to you. One of the first things we're going to look at is the size. This is the Vivo Active 3. And behind it is my personal daily watch, my Phoenix 3. As you can see, if you're familiar with the Garmin Phoenix watch, which is that on my wrist there now, you'll see that this new Vivo Active 3 is considerably smaller. The Vivo Active 3 is just 43 millimeters in diameter and only just less than 12 millimeters thick, so considerably smaller than the Phoenix. Comparing it to another new product, the Sunto Spartan Wrist HR, um, not that different on first sort of um, inspection. When you look more closely, you'll see that the, um, although the faces are quite similar, when you put them on the wrist, the Spartan is a bigger watch. And that's mainly due to that rear bottom lug area um, underneath the Sunto logo. Uh, and the same with the Polars. They have a, um, a, a sort of a predefined shape in the uh, top and the bottom lug. So unlike the Viva Active, which has a free swinging strap, so she's got a traditional lugs at the top and the bottom of the watch, and then the actual straps themselves swing freely, the Suntos um, has this predefined bend. And that bottom bit there, that's the actual GPS antennae in there. It just means that the um, for very small wrists, you're going to get more comfortable fit with the Garmin Viva Active than you might from some of the other competitors' watches. So if your wrist size is sort of 16mm, 17mm, then the Viva Active is going to be a good choice. Okay, so let's start looking at some of the uh, main features and functions. As I said, it's got the slider here on the side, and it's got a touch screen. So you can either slide up and down through the different apps, um, widgets and such like, or you can use the touch screen on the display to go through all of the um, features of the watch. These are the home screen features which include things like music control, smartphone notifications, stress score, calendar, previous activities. We will go through those in more detail a, bit, a little bit later. So that's the slider there. Um, I found it to be sometimes a little bit erratic. Um, it might just be me getting used to it. I've only been using the watch for three or four days, but um, once you've got used to it, then I think it'll be fine. Um, but uh, when I've been using the watch, I've actually just been using the touch screen. Okay, so there's only one button on the watch, and that's on the right hand side. Pressing the button once will take you to the uh, exercise mode. And when you're in exercise mode, then either use the touch screen or the slider to navigate to your preferred sports. Sports that you can see uh, here were initially were my favourites, and these are the others which you can add to your favourites. I've edited the default settings here, and if you want to, you can add new sports as well. So they are the ones which I don't have as my favourite. Um, the favourites were the ones that came up initially when I pressed the button. So press the button, again in sport mode, the white ones there are my favourites, and now we're in run mode. So it's looking for GPS, it's not going to pick it up because I'm in the office. What you get when you're with all the sports modes is either workouts and settings. So in workouts, if you set up a trailing calendar for a specific sport, it will tell you what you've got to do. And in settings, you can set things like auto laps, um, or, um, heart rate alerts, speed alerts, and um, very importantly, your data fields. People love to be able to change their data fields, and this is something that's been made very easy on the, uh, the new Garvins, and this will be active included. You've got the choice between one, two, three and four lines of data fields per training page. The white ones um, give you full access to all the data metrics. The black ones just give you access to some of the more 
top level sort of system ones like time of day and distance. So if you want to have as many options as you can, choose the white ones and not the black ones. Um, this is where you'd also set up your Connect IQ information. So if you've got um, some Connect IQ apps, which is Garmin's equivalent of the sort of the Apple App Store, then you would add those data fields here. Um, as you can see, you can't add an IQ to one of the black fields. You could if that was a white one. So if you want those to be fully customised, we'll make them white. So we're going to just have a look at a Connect IQ here. Um, just excuse me. Let's go to the Connect IQ. Uh, this is a uh, for me. I'm a windsurfer, so I've downloaded an app which is great for windsurfing. It gives me my speed in knots and my best 10 second speed, etc. It's actually more of a kite surfing app, but it's um, it's useful for windsurfing. It actually only works on one data field view. So let's go to one data field. Um, and that's how I would select that. Um, that's the only app I've currently got, data field app I've currently got in the in the um, in the Viva Active. Um, but as you'll remember, I'm currently working in the running sports mode. Um, so I like to have a three-line display when I'm running. I'm selecting them all as white fields, so these all have access to the full metrics. I've got one, two, and three screens, and I've got a heart rate zone gauge. So currently I've only got one and two on. I'm now going to quickly pop into each one and set up the data fields. You go into the top level and then you then just drill down to the one you want. So go into pace and then choose average pace, current pace, maximum pace, whatever you want, lap pace. Okay, so that's quite so sort of self-explanatory, it really doesn't need much explaining. And that's the beauty of the Vivo Active, it's just it's, super easy to use. Once you've spent half an hour or so playing with the menus and such like, you'll, you'll know exactly what you're doing. So I'll just fast forward this little section as I set up the other training pages, including adding the final um, heart rate gauge, which is uh, a very useful gauge if you're doing heart zone training or hit training or Tabata or any, any training that relies on heart rate zones. Okay. So that's me now done, it's all set up, and we'll go back now into the um, run mode, and I'll press start. I haven't got GPS, but I can still press start. And now we can see the three training pages with the data fields that I've set up, and the last, the fourth training page is my heart rate zone. So this is a zone gauge. So If I put the heart rate monitor on, you can see it very clearly shows you um, zones one, two, three, four, and five, the green zone, zone three being your sort of um, aerobic zone. The blue zone is your your primary sort of fat burning zone, as such. And then your orange and red are your higher end zones. Orange is more like your tempo zone, and the red is your sort of max heart rate zone. So if you were doing um, hit training or similar, this would be a very useful watch to have. Um, previously, I've been recommending the Garmin 400 235 or the Polar M400 or the M430. And I think this will be the hit training watch I'll be recommending for 2018. So just press the button to stop the session. Press the done on the screen. And now you can either save it or discard it. So I'm just going to discard this. If I save it, obviously it will be uploaded next time I make contact with Bluetooth to my Garmin Connect on my Android or iOS device. Now we're just going to go back to the home screen and just have a look at the main apps there that you'll see from the home screen. So this is your time of day obviously and then we can either use the slider or the screen swipe to take you to my day with a summary of your steps, calories and floors climbed. Each app, many of them have a secondary or even third screen as well if you just tap it. So this is my steps and daily goal and you can see my steps over the previous few days there as well. This is your weekly activity. Um, I've been using the Phoenix for my main training, so there's none in there currently, but you can set your weekly activity minutes there. This would be where you'd review your activity, so that would be your latest run, bike or swim sessions. You could go through the top level data. The weather app is um, one that I like. Uh, it frustrates me a bit, I can't change it to centigrade. Um, I can change the whole watch to metric, um, but, uh, but I would like just, well, just to change this. But you get um, an hourly forecast, and you could also get a, I think it's a seven day forecast as well if you scroll down there or scroll up, you get a seven day forecast. 
So it's useful, you need your phone within um, Bluetooth range because the data actually comes from the phone. Same for smartphone notifications. Um, we've got music control. I use the Google Play on my Android phone, so that's useful when I'm training. I can control the music. Um, a feature of the Viva Active is it's 24 7 heart rate recording. You get a heart rate graph throughout the day, and you also get a seven day resting heart rate recording. For more information on that, you should go and have a look on your Garmin Connect app where you get a lot better, with higher resolution, and a lot more data. You get your floors climbed with a daily graph of your um, achievements. And this is a stress monitor. So this is one of the new key features of the Viva Active. And it tells you um, at times when you are stressed, how much time throughout the day you are getting stressed. Again, you can see all of that from the um, Garmin Connect app. And um, you can do an ad hoc stress test. So just put the watch onto your wrist and then it will take a reading. So just take some deep breaths, relax, and within a few um, seconds you'll get your current stress score. Um, while doing this, I was keeping very relaxed. So at the end of this, I had a stress, stress score of zero. Um, luckily over the last few hours I've not been stressed and you can see my stress has barely gone above five or six but again you will get that summary um, in more detail on the Garmin Connect app. One of the questions we get asked most here is can I change the watch face? Um, the Viva Active, um, similar to some of the other new Garmin's like the Phoenix 5, has uh, unlimited um, styles of watch face. I'm just going to flick through them all here and uh, let you see some ideas of what you can and can't see. Um, some of them are pretty sort of minimalist, and quite arty, uh, some of the more traditional hands and di digital and such like, and you can totally create your own if you want to. So you can have um, your own customized display. So if you go to customize, you, the, you get to customize the dials, the data, the hands. Um, so let's just look at the hands. You can go through the different types of hands here. You can have Yeah, there we go. Sorry. And it's it's because it's being rendered live, you can really see what it's going to look like as well. Accents are the actual main colours. So you can choose the main accent, say for example red here. And then press the tick. And we go back. So um, you can't really tell on that style, on that design. You can see it more on some of the digital watch designs, but then when you're done, you're done. And there's my customized watch face with its own hands. You can even change the, um, let's go into this again. You can even change the data um, on the data fields. So if we go back to customize, okay, so I'm just going to go through a few of the other designs here. As you can see, it's pretty well. Oh, that's why I chose red, so you can see the red is a lot more prominent in some of the designs. Um, let's go back to data, sorry. So in data, I need to just tick on the Garmin here. You can choose, that's a data field that I can change on this one here, so I can have that to be, say, for example, um, my move bar. So there's my move bar. So on this particular one, that's the only field I can change. On different windows and different styles, you'll, you'll have different um, areas that you can change. Let's just change the hands again, because we can. There we go. That'll do. Change the accent colour again. Let's go to a green. Seems to need a couple of, couple of taps, this one. Can't really see it on there. But that's it done. And there we go. That's another customised display. So whatever your preference, um, the Viva Active 3 has it covered. There's loads of other things you can find from settings, from pressing and holding the display. I'm just going to flip through a few of them, nothing specific. This is where you'd find the history of your training sessions. This is where you'll find my stats you get your VO2 max, your personal records, your resting heart rate data. It's all stored in the watch, but obviously it's all stored in the um, app as well. Um, under settings is where you get um, your activities, widgets, controls, etc. 
I will go into those in a minute. But basically, you'll see. All, you don't get. Don't be put off by all these things. When you get the watch and turn it on and power it up and charge it and pair it to your phone, then you don't have to really go into any of this. The watch will work without doing a all or all, all this. This is just if you want to personalise the watch specifically to your requirements. So let's go into some of the activities. This activities and apps. This is where you make them either a favourite or disable them totally, and then each one of them has its own settings. As we saw earlier with the things like the data fields, so for swimming you can pool swim, we can set the length of the pool, the data screens, the colours, etc. So all of these sports profiles can be customised there. Widgets, um, widgets are the ones that you'll see on the um, home page normally, so you can add them, you can disable them, you can, if you've got new ones, if you want to find new ones completely then you use your Connect app. Um, but this will, there's certain ones here which are, I've just turned off, so for example golf or the verb light control or the calories, you can add them and remove them there. Uh, most people who use Aviva Active 3 will be making use of the built-in GPS and the heart rate, but if you want to add third party or Garmin external sensors you can add, uh, you can pair it with a heart rate belt, a speed sensor, a cadence sensor or a foot pod. But remember, it does have um, its own built-in GPS and accelerometer for indoor running. So you, I don't, I don't think that's something the majority of customers will will want to make use of. Okay, we're coming to the end of the review. One thing I forgot to say was the shortcut option. If you press and hold the button on the Viva Active Three, it conveniently takes you to the shortcut. So from here, you can do find my phone, or you can um, here we go, find my phone. Um, the audio is not on there, you wouldn't hear, but it's actually making a bleepy noise. You can change the background of the watch. You can put the watch into Do Not Disturb. You can turn the watch off. So it's pressing and holding the button on the right to get to that. To customise what you see in there, you go to the Controls menu. And from the Controls menu, you can add and remove the shortcut features. So if you want to remove one, just tap on it, and then you'll get the little bin in the middle. Uh, which you can then press to take that away. So if you want to add something there, you can just do that from these options here. It's a useful feature actually, something I really like. Um, so let's just add a flashlight and that's done. So press and hold to get to the shortcut menu, press the flashlight and that's it. So there's no messing around going into settings. Um, it's just if you've got you know, half a dozen um, widgets that you always like to use, then put them into your shortcuts and you'll have quick access to them. Um, and everything that, these all these features, the build quality, the comfort of the strap, the accuracy of the heart rate, um, the clarity of the display, everything about the Viva Active 3 is spot on. I can't see how I couldn't give it a 5 out of 5 star review, I genuinely can't. It is such a good watch. The only people who probably shouldn't buy this watch of genuine um, elite triathletes because it doesn't have access to the triathlete mode. So if you are a triathlete then you should be looking at something like the 935 Garmin 9935, the Sunto Spartan Trainer or even the older 735 XT or the 920 from Garmin because they have dedicated triathlon mode. And also for people looking for ABC uh, Altimeter Barometer Compass uh, functionality in a more rugged case then I would recommend a Phoenix 3 or Phoenix 5. Personally, I use the Phoenix 3 because I am very rough on my watches. Um, this is a more stylish, lighter weight watch than the Phoenix range. Phoenix range. It doesn't have the sapphire crystal display that you get in the Phoenix range. So it, you know, if you are rough on your watches, then maybe consider a Phoenix or a Sunto Spartan or something similar. But for 99% of other people, for anybody who does multi multi disciplines, so running, biking, gym, yoga, cardio, weights, hiking, swimming, etc., etc., it's brilliant. It's a five star review from me. Thanks for watching. This is Tristan from CardioCritic.com. Please like and subscribe and share. And uh, yeah, get check the prices. Thank you for watching.